I don't have any more hypoglycemia. Like I have not had a blood sugar drop since the first week of August. And that was one thing that I used to live in fear of on a daily basis because I would have to like take a little snack or a piece of candy in case it struck. And then those kind of things would take me down for the day. It was, it's very tiring. It's very debilitating. You get tired, dizzy, confused. I got in a car accident when I had low, uh, low blood sugar one time, and that just freaked me out. I haven't had that issue. How did you find the carnivore diet? Uh, well, hi, Dave. Uh, the carnivore diet, it's kind of been a, a little bit of a, a climb towards it or a journey towards it. Um, uh, just a real quick backstory. I understood about low carb and how it was a way to, for myself to easily lose weight. I understood uh, it through the Atkins diet way back in 2012. Um, I had uh, attempted Atkins for about a year and I was really successful on it. I lost a lot of weight. Then I went back to the regular way of eating. Um, uh, and then um, in 2015, I watched a movie called uh, forks over knives. And I became a vegan. So, um, you know, I would because I was always worried about um, I was having hypoglycemia, and um, just being overweight. So um, I was a, a vegan for about seven years. And um, the first year of being a vegan worked out really great for me. But I think it was because I had eliminated all of the other junk out of my life, like through the, uh, they call it the SAD diet, standard American diet. And I just went to just uh, whole foods and, and it was pretty good. I did lose a lot of weight and I did feel really good. Um, and that lasted, I think it lasted about a year. Um, and then it's really weird because I think probably this was in 2015. So around 2016, I started to experience really uh, a periodic neuropathy. And uh, neuropathy uh, was through both of my hands. Um, it would it was just a radiating pain up and down my shoulders, very painful. Um, it wasn't constant, but I would get these bouts like in the middle of the night, and I couldn't sleep. And I mean, it was it it was really painful. It uh, I couldn't you know cure it with ibuprofen or anything, but I just you know I I just kept you know kept on, and then I didn't even think anything about my diet at that point. I know that uh, on, in 2017, the doctor did diagnose me with prediabetes. And it's really funny because in my mind, I'm like, I'm eating really good. I just had no idea. Like, And I am Native American. I, I grew up on an Indian reservation. I am an enrolled member in a federally rec recognized tribe. So my, like, my history and lineage is... Uh, Native Americans, so there are a lot of family members, tribal members, people I grew up with that have prediabetes or prediabetes and diabetes. So it wasn't unusual to get that diagnosis. And, um, you know, because it's just, it's very common. Um, now, at the same time, um, my life was kind of getting a little stressful because my father started living with me and he was diagnosed with uh, a form of dementia called Alzheimer's. Plus he had um, uh, pulmonary fibrosis. He worked in a um, uranium mine in the 70s. So he had this issue in his lungs. So that was, I was really stressed out. I was still being a vegan. And um, I just, the doctor uh, did a blood test. And um, so there was, she noticed right away that uh, the doctor I had at the time through the Indian Health Service, it's called the IHS. That's generally where most Native Americans, if you're an enrolled member of a tribe, can go and get health care. Um, she noticed my triglycerides were really, really high as well. So I really don't know what triglycerides were, but I did know what statins were. Um, and I did not like the side effects that I read into um, for them. Uh, and so, but she did prescribe those to me. Now it's interesting because I wanted to find out about the neuropathy, but when I went to the doctor, she just honed in on the triglycerides and did not want to address anything else until this. Um, so 
I told her, I'm a vegan. I'm going to try to cure this with my diet. And I didn't, I, I think I took like one triglyceride. It freaked me out. I didn't want to do it. And, you know, I had read someplace that triglyc- tri- or, um, statins, uh, uh, side effects could maybe possibly be connected with dementia. And that just like, it really freaked me out. And I didn't, I didn't want to go there. So, um, my doctor wasn't really happy about me trying to cure it with my diet. She didn't, she didn't like that. I was only eating vegetables and no like real proteins, but I was eating proteins in my mind. I was eating like tofus and trying to eat vegetables that were high in protein nuts and stuff. And so I, you know, I tried that and uh, that was the last time I saw that doctor. So this was the other thing is that when you're, um, going through the IHS, it's hard to build a relationship with a doctor. You don't, uh, these doctors change in and out very frequently um, because it's like a public health service, I guess. So one doctor will focus on this and then you'll see a new whole new doctor and they have this whole new outlook. So here I am like still struggling with the neuropathy and, um, you know, just the stress of my life with taking care of my dad. and. Um, and I think it was in 2020. So I, I always had um, hypoglycemia where it's like kind of where your blood sugar peaks and then drops. But I really started getting it really bad between like 2019 and 2021. And, um, you know, and then I started having uh, like these issues with like whole grains. I mean, like for example, um, as a vegan, everybody like um, talks and and, like um, recommends and says how good oats are like whole oats, like even still cut oats and um, any kind of oats. They were just, I mean, it was, it was, I was experiencing so much pain, like in my stomach, I would have bloating. I mean, I would have so much gas. Nobody talks about how much gas you have on a vegan diet. It, it was, it was almost like a kind of like a, inside joke with my family because um, I was the only vegan. Nobody was really interested in it. It was just really weird. And um, I never let my mom buy uh, any kind of oils. Oh, I, I didn't let her cook with oil or, or, or butter or anything. It was all water saute, you know, vegetables. Um, I didn't uh, use a lot of salt. They have a thing called SOS free, which is salt oil, sugar free. And the starch solution, which is, uh, you know, your plate is like 50% uh, a starch, like potatoes or rice. And then 50% of the plate is like just like vegetables, like kale, broccoli, cauliflower, just non-starchy vegetables. And this is the way I was eating. Now, so on top of the neuropathy, the hypoglycemia and these gut issues, I was, I even just, I didn't think about it at the time, but looking back at it, I realized I was starving. Like I was always hungry and I had such low energy. Like I was always tired. Um, and I, I could never get any kind of satiation with my, with my diet. I would eat, you know, I would eat a lot of food and, and, um, just because I was always hungry, but still I was tired. It it was just like, I didn't put, I just didn't put all of these puzzle pieces together. Um, so that was really, really weird, especially because it was such supposed to be such a good diet. So now the the being a vegan so far in, when you're experiencing such hunger uh, and uh, zero satiation, then you start to um, kind of look for foods that will satisfy you. So I started eating a lot of tofu. And uh, it's interesting because even now I, I noticed this at the grocery store from even seven years ago, that there are so many more, um, they call it transitional foods with the vegan diet. Like there's, uh, and I don't know why, I mean, you're trying to be a vegan, you don't want to eat any kind of animal products or meat, but there's all of these, like they, they started coming out with the Beyond Burger, the Impossible Burger. Is it the Possible Burger? I think it was. And anyway, I mean, just like foods that look like meat or, you know, it, it, so anyway, uh, and just these things are not good for you. There's so much, there's so many weird ingredients 
they're very high in fat, there's seed oils, all of these things. But that's what I was leaning towards more because I was so hungry. And this was, you know, um, uh, through these foods, I, I gained more weight, you know, and I'm pretty sure my prediabetes was, you know, just worse than ever. And I, it was probably, I was probably really getting close to getting actual diabetes um, in the meantime. And then in 2020, or around 2021, I started to get really sharp stabbing pains early in the morning in my lower bowel, like in my back. And then once I eliminated or uh, pooped, um, it would go away. And this was really, really like scary to me because I was just like, I don't know what this is. Um, and then it would happen um, every time I had to eliminate. And the thing about eating a lot of high fiber foods, because my diet was very high in fiber, um, you it has to come out. And so I don't know if a lot of vegans experience this or talk about it, but you are eliminating a lot uh, through the day, sometimes four to six times for me a day. And that, that's, you know, that's a lot. It's like, it, it's kind of, um, I got to the point where I'd have to schedule, you know, my day around, like if I had meetings, I'd have to say, I can't eat this food. It's going to really, you know, give me like gut issues or gas or like, it was just, I mean, it was really overwhelming. Um, so I decided again to, to try to, uh, all this time I'm not seeing a doctor because I have this, you know, there's this issue with like IHS, like it's, I don't have a doctor. If I go, it's just going to be, you know, a new doctor that's just going to be there for a while. Then they're going to move on to, you know, another place. So, but I, I decided I made an appointment because of these pains. And um, so of course they always want to do blood work. Um, it's almost as if at the IHS, there I say, they're just waiting for that diabetes diagnosis, you know, and that's what they hone in on. And, but I just, just decided like, I don't care. I'll make an appointment. And, and it took about three to four months to get my appointment. And it was a whole new doctor again, but I really liked her. She was very helpful. She was new. Every time I, this is the thing. Every time I made an appointment and see a doctor, it's like, they're, they're, they're like, Oh, the, I'm only, here. I've only been here for two weeks. I've only been here for like less than a month. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. Anyway, she was very kind and she listened to me. And I told her, you know, I'm having, I told her like how I'm eating. I have a diet high in fiber. I I'm a vegan. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't eat, uh, I water saute my food, you know, just all of these things. I don't eat a lot of oils, but um, you know, I'm having very painful um, uh, uh, back issues and pain in my, like my colon area when I'm going to the bathroom. And then once I go, I'm fine. And so she thought that was really weird. And that what I explained to her, I was, I tried to be very descriptive and she, we didn't really uh, cover the issue of the prediabetes with my blood work, although I did have it still. She, this other thing was more concerning to her. And so she uh, referred me to a gastroenterologist for a colonoscopy. And, um, and I just, you know, I was really surprised, but I, I did, I had a colonoscopy and, um, uh, you know, they asked a lot of questions and, you know, my, my weight's always an issue because I'm only five, two. So it's like, you know, that's something that's pr pretty apparent, but, um, you know, he asked me a lot of questions, the, the gastroenterologist as well. I was really descriptive and even what I was explaining to him was not usual for someone who had say colon cancer, but it was really unusual. And so we had the, the test and he called me up and, um, the first thing he said is that I did have about four polyps and something called diverticulosis, not diverticulitis, but diverticulosis, which is just pockets in the intestine, but there's no inflammation, you know, or anything like that. So um, the, there was nothing, the, the, the polyps were benign and, and anything else, he said, your colon looks fine, you know, um, and he was, he just, he didn't have an answer for me.
for the pain I was experiencing. He he just basically said, um, you just have a very sensitive colon. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, you know, I was probably just scrubbing it clean with all these vegetables and this fiber. like. So, but we did, it's really funny because I was kind of like, I was just, I was um, having, still having neuropathy, still having um, uh, like, uh, having to, um, having to deal with the uh, hypoglycemia. And then I, these gut issues, not even, not able to eat oats anymore or anything with grains. Um, I had to be careful about that. And it was just, and so he, he talked about my weight a little bit and we ended up talking about a low carb diet. And it's funny because all this time I just hadn't thought about that. I was so like focused on like, this diet is supposed to be the best diet for me. Um, so he kind of, it's kind of interesting because I feel like at that point, the idea of a low carb diet kind of got planted in my mind. And because he didn't have any answers for me, you know, I was just kind of like, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't for me. And it's fairly interesting because um, I'm the kind of person when I find out about stuff, I like to read up on it or, you know, use the internet, YouTube. And I had, I followed a lot of vegan influencers. And it was interesting because I started to notice through YouTube that there were vegan influencers that started to kind of stop being vegan because maybe they had a good, good issue or, you know, just weird stuff like that. And um, even there was an influencer who I, I love dearly who decided to um, reveal his blood work uh, on his show and his cholesterol was so high. I think his triglycerides were high as well, but he, here he is, he eats this really good diet and he was just kind of disappointed. And he ended up uh, at, uh, kind of like what I did, maybe talking to the doctor saying, this is how I eat. I don't want to take the statins. Let me fix it with my diet. And so, and he recorded this on the internet. So um, I think he went a month where he went very strict vegan, where, uh, and I think it was the starch solution, SOS free, where it's like, it's, it's such a hard diet to follow. I mean, it's, there's nothing fun about it. And even still, I think it was a, a month or so after he did a second round of blood work and the cholesterol was still high. And so I think it was something like the doctor was like, well, it could be uh, like hereditary, you know, things like that. But I feel like even at the time um, he, it, to me, it seems like he explained to, you know, us, the viewers, that um, that, di that diet that he was on was too hard. He couldn't sustain it. He was still a vegan, but the way he was eating to cure the uh, high, high cholesterol, it was too hard. And so at that point, I was just like, okay, what's going on? This, it just kind of, I just got disillusioned by this diet. So I just... I was, um, and it's interesting. So um, I, I, I do have my faith. And um, at one point I was just not feeling good. Plus I had even more stress because of my dad. My dad was really, really good. He's getting worse and worse. Uh, and um, last year he got like, he, his, um, his situation got even worse. So I was just, you know, and I was, all I was doing was caring for him. I wasn't really caring for myself. And um, I remember in my faith, I was just kind of praying in the morning. Um, and I feel like I, I um, feel like I felt the Lord tell me that my immunity was compromised. Like that's, I can't explain it to you, but that's just what I felt like he told me. And um, I remember in, in the scriptures, it says that, uh, you know, that God is our uh, great physician. And so I just, I kind of had to lean towards that because I wasn't getting anywhere with my, you know, my regular um, IHS. And so I was just that really, it really kind of scared me. And I was like, what is going on? Um, and I just, uh, so I started thinking about it and kind of, um, playing it over in my head, like, okay, so 
maybe if I just, maybe I can be low carb and still be a vegan. Um, and I was like, okay, so how do I do this? So I was trying to like research like low carb vegan diet. And um, it, you know, I, it, I don't know if it was possible. I think it would, I would have been leaning towards eating more like fake meats and things like that. And I was just like, I don't know if I want to do that. So then I remembered Atkins diet, which was like, what, 2012. And, and then what's really interesting is I remembered a time in about 2009. At the time I had this job where I would, was required to travel two weeks out of the month for, you know, I did this for several years. I would go to different um, uh, Indian reservations because I was, uh, the job I did was working closely with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, with the records, tribal records, tribal lands, things like that. So I was in Montana. I was on the Flathead Reservation and it's, um, it's so beautiful there. And there's a lot of, they do a lot of hunting. It's very easy for them. There's a lot of uh, like elk and deer in those areas. And a friend of mine prepared an elk steak for me. That was something that he actually um, hunted and had, you know, prepared. And it was, a, uh, I knew uh, back home that sometimes on the reservation, elk meat was like a, r a real special food. And I, for some reason, I had never had it. I had deer meat, I had deer stews, things like that as a uh, or on the reservation I'm from, but I never had it prepared where it was just like the steak. It was just like this beautiful elk steak. I didn't think anything of it. I'm not a vegan or anything like that. And I just, uh, but I was, I re remember this memory of when I, I went to take a bite of this piece of elk and my body like stood to attention, like, um, it was the weirdest thing. I, I can't even explain it to you, Dave. It was like, I knew that that's the food I was supposed to eat. My, it was like my, have you ever had the chills where the, the hair on your body just stands up? That's what happened to me when I ate, took a bite of that steak. It was like, um, I don't want to say, it was like this really like uh, primordial response to the, memory of the culture that I'm from, you know, if I could explain it like that. It's just like and your body was saying to you, yes, keep doing this. Yes. And, you know, I didn't even know what was going on. And it's, uh, and so, at, but at that time, you know, I wasn't really focused on eating the right things or anything, but I just, rem I, I, I can't, I, and I have kind of forgot about it. But so when I'm having these issues with my diet and everything and thinking about low carb and, you know, trying to, you know, I thought about and I was like, oh, my gosh. And so it's really funny because in YouTube, you know, there's we there's a, a kind of like this the algorithm in YouTube is based on what you like to watch. And so, you know, I was always watching vegan shows, how to cook vegetables, how to, you know, all these things. But I so also I remember. Um, seeing, starting to see Dr. Barry on my feed. And um, I assumed he was another vegan influencer, you know, because he has these headlines like how to cure, you know, um, heart disease or, you know, and I remember clicking on one and I was, at first I was so offended because I was like, this guy is low carb. He's not a vegan. Like I was just like, but, you know, I watched it anyway because I was curious about all of these uh, and these were his older shows, um, you know, um, and I think, I believe he was still keto. So I found out a bit keto. And so um, in July of 2022, I just, it was the funniest thing. I, I just got brave and I was driving to work and I was just like, I didn't make my, my vegan lunch or anything. And I was just like, I'm for lunch. I'm going to have a keto lunch. I'm going to have some chicken over a salad, bed of lettuce, and I'll eat whatever dressing it is. I don't care if it has dairy. And so I did. But and I, it was funny because I felt like I was hiding in my cubicle. At that time, it was after this whole um, uh, uh, pandemic thing. So my office was very empty. And they had us rotating out where there would be. And they had us spread out through the office. So like if you went into the office, 
um, you hardly saw anybody. So my little cube was kind of like this little like sanctuary. And so I was in my cube at lunch. I turned everything off my computer and phone and I just like ate the salad and I was just like, like sneaky, like, and um, I was kind of scared what it would do to me and, but I was fine. And I was like, um, I had energy and I felt good and it didn't bother my stomach and just, it was, it was really weird. So at that point I was like, well, here I am. So uh, my mom and I went keto. We went keto for about six months and she immediately lost like so much weight. I mean, uh, I was a little slower. I probably lost about 15 pounds in six months and um, about a month in my neuropathy was gone. And this is something that I had dealt with on a daily basis. You know, uh, it was very noticeable, like, because I'm in a cube, I'm typing, I'm using the mouse. And and I was always like going like this, like my hands are asleep and, the, and they're in pain. Um, I'm an artist. It was, you know, when I'm painting, I'm, I'm painting and I'm just in the moment and I don't want to stop. But my hands uh, feel just like two balloons, like the Pink Floyd song. It was just like it was it was awful. But a mo- about a month into keto, it it just went away. And I was just like, what is going on? So I, and the, um, I can't recall if the pain in my bowel was gone, but I don't re- remember if it was being, it, it was as bad as it was. It was a little less noticeable, I guess you could say. Um, and then <clears throat> it's funny because, uh, we, my mom and I, we talk about the keto diet, how it's just such a high, it's so high in fat. And, um, and everything now is so contrary to that, especially coming out of the vegan diet. It's like low fat, low fat, you know, uh, I do remember that I did experience something with my gallbladder because I did the research. I didn't go to the doctor, but I did like, what is this deep pain inside of my gut that I'm feeling? And I remember um, I bought some supplements from Dr. Berg. Uh, a, a gallbladder supplements. And um, I took, you know, a few days of that and that, that uh, the uh, gallbladder pain was gone. Um, I never had an issue with that again. But I think it was because I wasn't before I started keto, I was like eating no fats. And I don't know what I did to my system. But it was just kind of like, that's the pain I was getting. That's the only issue that I had when I changed. I didn't, I don't remember anything else uh, that happened with my digestion or anything, but I did fine on a vegan diet. Um, The other thing, the other memory that I had remembered during this time, because I was like, what's up with this eating this high fat diet? You know, I had this uh, memory of my mom telling me um, about her great grandmother, my great grandmother. um, um, Her name was Kuraitsa. And she was this cute little Pueblo lady that had a really hard life. She worked really, really hard. And um, her generation was very close to um, the times when, you know, first of all, Native Americans couldn't vote. There was no, you know, TV, there were no phones, anything like that. And they would have uh, bouts of uh, like starvation, especially in the winter. Um, And it was very scary because there wasn't, you know, they didn't have an easy access to food like we do. Everything was locally sourced. You went, you hunted. Um, my, the, the tribe I am is Laguna Pueblo. So uh, the Pueblos in New Mexico uh, are sedentary, meaning that we have permanent dwellings. And our ancestors are from the Anasazi who had the same, they had these huge um, like cities and uh you know, and they had uh, like commerce and they traded, but they were farmers. And that's my, my people were farmers. We were, we we did uh, um, agriculture based on uh, not irrigation systems, but on the weather. Uh, I believe they're called dry farms. And so that's the kind of food they were eating. But anyway, she would tell me, my mom would tell me that when grandma Kuraitsa saw a fat person, she, it was like, she would just, feel so blessed. And she would just want to touch that person and hug that person and thank that person. Because when you're so robust, it's like a blessing because they know 
that you're going to survive the winter, that you're going to be able to have strong babies and carry on the culture and just, you know, that you're strong. And I always felt comfort in that. And so, but I started to think about that and just the simplicity of a diet from, you know, my, my people the, in the ancient days, you know, and, you know, they, there was probably, you know, no sugars, no processed foods, no seed oils, you know, um, and so that kind of encouraged me with this high fat diet. I, I don't know, I'm just, that's just something that went through my mind. And so I just kept doing it. So, but, but uh, it had, I, I was able to do keto for six months and then I went on vacation. <laughs> I went on vacation and I did not plan. I went to Florida. Um, I went to Walt Disney World and I just, you know, I had saved up for two years on this. I hadn't been on vacation for years. I saved up and it's just kind of one of those things where you're just like, well, I did, I, I did this. I deserve this. So yes, I'm just going to. I'm just going to eat anything. And I did. And, you know, uh, a, a couple of Dole Whips in, I don't know if you know what a Dole Whip is, but it's this ice cream that they serve in Disney World. And it's just, it's lovely and it's sweet and it's ice cream. And anyway, so, but what's, what's interesting, what I noticed is even about three days in on my vacation, my neuropathy came back like right away. It just like, and I just felt awful. I felt awful through my whole vacation because I was eating all this crap when I had been eating keto. So I came home and at the, that time, my dad got even worse. My dad's uh, condition got worse and he required 24 hour care at the time. He started, um, of course he has the Alzheimer's, he has the pulmonary fibrosis. He started getting seizures um, because uh, there was like, um, uh, what do they call them? Like uh, spots in his lungs. Um, they didn't know what it was. It could have been cancer. They couldn't do any kind of uh, tests on his lungs because they're already compromised and he's so elderly. And at the time he was losing so much weight because it was hard to get him to eat anything. Um, so he got worse. I quit my job that I had for like 12 years, the job that, you know, um, I really, I was really good at. It's the job that I dealt with the travel records, the Indian accounts, things like that. I, but uh, I just had to quit suddenly in January. So, but at this time, because of the stress, I didn't even care to even think about what I was eating. And I just went back to the, literally went back to the sad diet, went back to the neuropathy um, and just pain in my body, pain in my shoulders, my hands, my feet, um, hypoglycemia. And what's really what what I noticed as well is because because I wasn't a vegan, then I started like not only eating just regular food, but I was eating like really bad. Like I was I started to go to McDonald's again, just, you know, things that you don't you don't go to McDonald's as a vegan. You just don't. There's nothing you can eat. Uh, so I was like so it was like it, it was not only sad, but it was on sad on like steroids. because I wasn't a vegan anymore. And it was bad. It was really, really bad. Um, so I didn't, I don't even know how I got through the, the last three months of my dad's life because I was probably just, uh, I, I don't, maybe it was just adrenaline that got me through. And I had, you know, my, me and my brother, we, we took care of dad and uh, we were just focused on him and not on ourselves at all. And I was determined to keep my dad and take care of him until the Lord took him home. We couldn't use a nursing home option because we do have a nursing home on our reservation, but they do not have the staff or the training to care for somebody that has dementia like my dad. My dad lasted eight days in the nursing home. And the reason he got there is because after this, the seizure, <clears throat> they he couldn't walk. But um, it's funny because he was at the nursing home for 24 hours and he could walk. He could walk. And um, so he he kept trying to escape those kind of things. When, these are the things that happen when somebody has dementia. They don't know where they are, who they are, but they always want to go home. They're always trying to find a way out. And so they called us and we just, so we brought dad home. And so that's why I had to quit. And that's why the stress level, the factor increased. So 
um, dad went on hospice because he had another seizure. And um, he, he, at that point, it was three months before he passed away and he, he couldn't, re he really couldn't walk at that point. And so he passed away in July and, um, and I'm very, I'm very glad that, uh, it, that um, I know where he is and he's not hurting. He's, he's not in pain. And what I'm also thankful for is that it was almost like a break because it was really hard. I took care of him for about six, six or seven years. It was really, really hard. But I did not take care of myself trying to do all these things. And so about two weeks after he passed away, I was just kind of focusing on, okay, so why am I feeling like this? Yeah, because I'm eating all this crap, this awful food. And, um, and I didn't, I was kind of had this decision, like I can either keep doing this, um, get diabetes and um, maybe get depression, but I didn't want to do that. Uh, I, I just, and so I started watching um, more of Dr. Barry's current YouTubes where he's talking about BB and E. And I love watching him and Nisha when they go live and they answer all these questions. And I was just like carnivore. That's when I started to realize about carnivore. And I was like carnivore. And I love how he talks about it as maybe sometimes an elimination diet to, um, you know, maybe reset and take out of take out the things that are causing you distress or inflammation. I knew I had inflammation. And so I just, um, I, I thought about it and I, I, um, did some research on it and I watched a lot of videos. I started watching doc more of Dr. Barry, but then I came across Jordan Peterson and his daughter, Michaela. And I was just like, I, I, I watched uh, Michaela and how she talked about all of the, the issues that they were having and then how they just realized that it was just the, the simplicity of just zero carbs. And I was like, I was amazed. And, and that was encouraging. Then I found your channel and it, I, I love your channel because it's just, it's very straightforward. There's no fluff. It's just, you know, and, and your little bits of documentation of how you were feeling was so encouraging to me. Plus I have the bonus of Belle Shine, who was like this, this vegan. <laughs> and I don't know, it was just kind of like, it, it, it just, I, I, I loved it because I could identify with that type of personality. I totally could. I was like, it's almost as if I, maybe there was a little bit of a bell shine in me for a really long time, no matter how, how bad I felt, because I just, I just felt so righteous and eating all this, these clean veggies. And I just was feeling like crap. So anyway, I also came across um, uh, Dante Ferrigno uh, and what I liked about him is, and so I'm, I, I had said before, I'm Indian, so I'm Native American, and it's very hard to find uh, resources with, and that, that are identifiable with me and my culture or other people, but I love, what I loved about his channel what, is that he was cooking outside. He, I don't know if you ever saw his, where he, I guess he has a house now, but he would cook outside in his, in his um, porch, and it just kind of reminded me of like, hey, I think that's something my grandpa would do. He 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 would uh, during the summer he would uh, build a little shack right outside the house, um, and he would cook there and he would sleep there. I don't know. It just it just seemed kind of like uh, there's a there's a a term we use. It's called a resed out or like reservation. So I was like, this guy is like he's so resed out. He's cooking his steaks in his air fryer on his porch. So that's what I liked about him. I don't know. And then I found out about um, Bella, the steak and butter gal. And I, and I was like, I couldn't get over her testimony because she was a vegan as well. And that, I mean, that was like a, enough for me as well. I was just like, wow. Then I started to research about uh, ex-vegans and, um, you know, I was like, my eyes were open. I was like, there's issues that these people are experiencing. There was a gentleman that was on um, 
the live broadcast for Homestead How, and he said something, I don't remember his name, but he, I, I just cracked up because he said something like, veganism is kind of like the gateway uh, diet to the carnivore. It cracked me up because I was like, oh my gosh. I, I, and I, I believed it, you know, that's funny. So anyway, I went, uh, decided to go full carn carnivore uh, the first week of August. So I'm eight weeks in now. Um, I hardly have any neuropathy. I mean, that's the first thing that subsided. And, and to me, that's enough. Like, I'm like, there's something in this because ibuprofen, Tylenol did not help it at all. Um, you know, even just like exercise or trying to not, you know, be stressed out, nothing. It was, it, it, this, I can't even explain it. I, um, I don't have an issue when I'm painting because I, I paint. Um, if I'm just, I don't know anything. My, my, the pain in my, in my hands and my wrists, and it, it would radiate all the way up to my shoulders. That's gone. Um, now uh, I, I have lost a little bit of weight. I started at 236, and I think 236 at my height, 5'2", that's like the heaviest I've ever been. And um, so last Friday, I was 224. So I am losing weight. Um, my goal right now is just to get to 200 pounds. That's because it's just, it's just more realistic for me. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be disappointed. But if I do get to 200 pounds, then I'll reassess. And maybe and then I'll just, I'll just eat, keep eating like this. And I will just We'll see how far it gets as far as the weight loss. But the other thing that I was um, thinking about last night, because I was like, well, what else can I, um, can I uh, present to Dave about this, how I'm eating and how it's affecting me? So I do understand now, this is, I didn't bring this up, but I do understand that being through everything thing that I went through with the eating is that I did have food addiction because like I was saying, as a vegan, I was eating and eating and eating. I was starving, you know. And so what, what is surprising me, I don't know if this is a non-scale victory, but like my appetite seems so calm. I, I don't even know if that makes sense. I don't know if you feel that way, but it's like. Makes there, total sense. There's just this like calmness of like no um not even having to think about when your next meal is or calculate that or worry um i don't have any more hypoglycemia like i have not had a blood sugar drop since the first week of august and that was one thing that i used to live in fear of on a daily basis because i would have to like take a little snack or a piece of candy in case it struck and then those kind of things would take me down for the day it was it's very tiring it's very debilitating. You get tired, dizzy, confused. I got in a car accident when I had low, uh, low blood sugar one time, and that just freaked me out. I haven't had that issue. And, um, and so I'm just letting, I don't want to manipulate my diet right now. I'm just allowing my body to naturally, uh, I guess, uh, recover and um, get used to like when I'm hungry and when I'm not, and so right now, I feel like I'm not eating a lot. I, I have a new YouTube channel, and I did a what I eat in a day, and my niece watched it. I don't have, I have two subscribers. <clears throat> Nobody's watching my videos except my family. And my niece was like, you didn't hardly put anything in there in your what I eat in a day. You made your coffee, you showed your um, T-bone steaks, and a couple of all beef hot dogs, that's it. She goes, why did you post that? But that's the, that's what's going on. Like, um, you know, I'll have a cup of coffee. I, I, I tried, my goal was to get off a of coffee, but, um, when I decided to, to try lion diet last week and it was totally a fail. Um, I had the worst day of my life when I did not have that cup of coffee. And I feel like the lion diet is so strict in itself that it was just like too much at once. And I, um, so I incorporated, incorporated back in. So my, I, in the morning I, I have one cup of coffee. It's like three and a half cups 
kind of like an Americano style. I have butter. I put a, a healthy tablespoon of butter and heavy cream. And and then I'm fine. I can, I'm like, I, I don't even know how to explain them. It. it just, I, I'm just happy about it, but I'm fine until I don't even think about eating. Um, sometimes my mom reminds me that, and that's, you know, that's very unusual. Nobody ever had to remind me when to eat. And so I'll probably, my, my appetite, uh, where you kind of feel that emptiness in your stomach will strike anywhere from four, like three to five, four o'clock is kind of where I've been eating. That's when I'm eating. It's like, and so it's, it's just crazy. Wow. So you go through the whole day and all you've had is coffee and butter and yes, I, it, it, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's awesome because I just, I can do more things like, since my dad passed away, I have all of these projects. I have all of these art projects that I want to do and these these other kind of things that I just have been holding off and not doing. And I just have time to do these things. I don't have to have a skip like a interruption in my day. And, you know, and it seems like it, it it's almost like the day goes by so fast without me having to fret about what I'm going to eat. So uh, when I eat, I'll. Um, have my, now I, I feel like, and this is, I've seen this trend, but the ideal is like a ribeye. They're very expensive now. So, you know, and it's really cute because even my mom and my niece, when they go shopping, they'll, they know what I'm doing. They'll, if, if they can find it, they'll get me a ribeye or a, a T-bone steak. And the reason I say that is because it's taken up to a year for me to be comfortable with cooking meat. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it, it, I didn't know how to do it. Of course I hadn't meat. I haven't cooked. I didn't cook meat for so long that I was just like, what am I doing? I my mom would cook it for me. She cooks a pretty good steak. And, um, and so now I, um, I watched, uh, Bill not, I I'm a really big fan. I'm such a big fan of Bill not because he's so real. Uh, again, his little dwelling is just like, I know people on the res that that's similar. They live similar. It's just very simple, very humble, very beautiful. Um, no frills, nothing. There's no, um, nothing fake. It's just, he, I just love it. But he, and, um, and I'm very encouraged to watch him, to watch his journey. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited for him, but, uh, he, he made this, um, these little hamburger, uh, hamburgers that were wrapped in bacon. I don't know if you saw that, but he bought he has this, it's the Ninja Speedy, it's this air fryer. So I went ahead and I got one of these air fryers. And so I'm learning how to cook a steak. And uh, even on keto, I, uh, I was eating steak, but I could not eat anything but a very, very well done steak. I call it a uh, reservation style where the, the, the meat is like one step below shoe leather. Like it's, that's what I, that's only what I could eat. I could, and before I remember way, you know, seven years prior, I would love a, a, a rare, medium rare steak. I, it was wonderful. But this past year, it was like, I just cannot do that. I can't. So I have been eating such hard meat. I, <laughs> but I was still eating it. It was fine with, for me. It was, I don't know what it is. So, but within the last few days, I'm learning how to make a better tasting steak with this wonderful little contraption. Um, I, I am not afraid to, to eat a um, medium steak maybe for the past three days. And it's just this little ninja speedy. So um, I'm, I'm not ready to cook on the stove. So we'll, we'll, but we'll see how, how that goes. And um, so that's kind of my diet. And then so I'll have, a, I'll have like either a big ribeye or two T-bone steaks. I realized I'm really paying attention to what I can eat. I realize I can eat a pound of meat, whether it's ground beef or steak, and I will be fine. I could even, that would probably be fine for just the whole day. Um, if I eat less than that, then I'll probably have another lighter meal, eight or nine o'clock at night. I don't like to eat that late, but I'm just saying, I'm just thinking, well, if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. So I'll maybe have just like a little burger patty at that point, or um, uh, Sam's makes these really good. Um, kielbasa, all beef kielbasa hot dogs or whatever they are. 
I'll fry a couple of those in the air fryer. Um, and so, and that's how it goes. Um, if I have to go out, I'm not brave enough to ask anybody if they cook in seed oils yet, but I'll just order a um, couple of burger patties and I'll be fine. I'll be fine. So, you know, it's simpler and I'm very excited about it. So I've got, I've got a question. So we're, we're like, uh, August, September, we're, we're two months in. How is the how is the bathroom activities in comparison? It's amazing. Okay, first of all, I have no gas. I literally have no gas. Um, I could probably uh, this is terrible. <laughs> I could count the farts in one hand that I've had. I mean, there's there's none. You know, now I <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, and it okay. So when when you watch people start on the carnivore diet, they're like, you know, there's uh, and and it is it's it's a switch in the digestion so yeah you are having um diarrhea you got to be careful you, somebody even said i don't know who said it i said somebody said never trust the fart on the first few on the first month of carnivore <laughs> right but i was already experiencing all these awful things that this is like nothing so i am past like having the having to run to the bathroom or like you know i'm past that and i'm just um i'm I'm just an, a morning eliminator. I'll go once in the morning. I don't have any problems. It does not give me a backache. I'm not woke. I don't get woken up in the early hours with a with a pain in my back. Um, so you know, I'm I can't believe it. It's amazing. So it, it's not an issue really for me at this point. And um, so now the other things that I'm trying to track as well is, and I think this is from the caretaking and the grieving, but I'm, I, I'm not sleeping a lot still. I'm probably averaging four to six hours of a night where I was averaging about four hours, gosh, for the last six months because of my dad. So I'm hoping that that will get better, but it's a, probably about six hours a night. And I still have pain in my lower back and my hips. And I'm trying to like every morning I get up and I think of the pain scale from one to 10. And so at the beginning of this, it was probably a nine or a 10. I'd have to take Tylenol because Tylenol will work with my lower back and my hips. But now, like for example, this morning, it was probably, I, I'm sticking with six, but I'm, I'm thinking it was more of a five. I, I don't know if it'll get any better. We'll, we'll wait and see. You know, we'll just, we'll wait and see about that. Right now, your feeling is you're just going to stick with this. Um, I for now, I'm definitely, I am definitely all in. I, um, I keep thinking of, I don't know if it was a short on Joe Rogan that Jordan Peterson was on or what it was, but I keep thinking of him over and over when he says, "Cheat, I never cheat." Like he's referring to the carnivore way of eating. I never cheat, and even my mom saw it and she's like, "Remember." Jordan Peterson never cheats, you know, because I was such a cheater in eating and in, in as a vegan, you know, I, I, and then after that, it was just when the snowball hit where I wasn't a vegan anymore and eating everything. So she's like, remember, you know, so uh, I, I have to keep thinking about that. But what um, encourages me, first of all, is no neuropathy. And the second thing, I did see a video with Dr. Barry about um, dementia. So that's the other thing is I'm I'm doing this for dementia prevention. I know there's no studies, but I just feel, and and I think that Dr. Barry said something to along the lines of, you know, what's the harm in it? You know, we don't have the studies, but what's the harm in even just trying it? Because, you know, when you have a parent that went, that has dementia, your automatic thoughts are like, this could be me. This could be me in like less than 20 years. And that's the thing that keeps me motivated to do this, to keep doing it. Um, and so I'm trying to do lion diet. It's very hard. I, I, and I don't know how long I'll do lion diet, maybe till the end of the month. And then I might just go B, B, and E. But I also want to incorporate um, uh, seafood. And so I'm able to eat shrimp. Shrimp doesn't freak me out uh, and gross me out. And sardines. I'm, I'm fine with sardines. Um, I used to love sardines, like, you know, prior to being a vegan, I, that was 
it was one of my it's it's such a it's such a, a native american food i don't know it's just you know because it's easy it's protein you know so um those are the things that i may do yeah i might quit coffee but i don't know i don't know it's funny uh it's like my only it's it's my only plant food so if people want to reach out to you lisa how can they get in touch how can they find you on youtube so my channel um is just like it's spelled on my little um label there it's until we meet again m-e-a-t and i only have two subscribers um and i'm just i'm learning youtube uh i want it to be centered around just how I'm, just like a journal or documentation of this carnivore journey but i want it to include just who i am um you know uh and uh, where i live and you know i'm not sure what else it'll include but i'm just learning but yes my youtube channel is until we meet m-e-a-t again and the mm. title of my channel is kind of like um, uh, in honor of my dad because I know that I will meet him again. So that's kind of in my mind. And when I meet him again, he's going to know who I am. You know, he'll know, he'll have a new be- a new mind, a new body, and he'll know me. He- he'll I'm not going to be a stranger to him. So that's kind of what keeps me motivated as well. Is the name the title to my channel? Mm. You got three subscribers now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's that thank you. Yeah. Thanks, no Dave. Worries. I appreciate that. That's no I'm worries. I'm honored for that. So um and of course I'll link to it in the description below so people can find you. Okay. Um all right. Lisa, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your journey and uh I hope uh I hope things continue to improve. I do too. Thanks for thanks for having me. This thanks so much. This is like a dream come true. This is awesome.